Let's turn now to the historic week in politics to take a deeper look at the first debate of the Republican presidential primary and the issues shaping the race. We're joined now by Washington Post columnist Gary Abernathy, who's based in Ohio, and Sarah Smarsh. She's a freelance journalist based in Kansas. Both David Brooks and Jonathan Capehart are away tonight. Welcome to you both. So let's delve right into the issues. The GOP presidential candidates clashed Wednesday night over whether the next president should sign into law a federal abortion ban. This is a major issue uh, dividing the candidates, even as all of them identify as pro-life. Here's that key exchange between Nikki Haley and Mike Pence. When you're talking about a federal ban, be honest with the American people. I am we being haven't honest. had 45 pro life senators in over 100 years. So, no Republican president can ban abortions any more than a Democrat president could ban all those state laws. Don't make women feel like they have to decide on this issue when you know we don't have 60 Senate votes in the House. 70% of the American people support legislation. But 70% of the after Senate. Does Gary Abernathy, why haven't Republicans, <clears throat> excuse me, been able to rally around a single strategy on abortion more than a year after they were successful in having the Supreme Court overturn Roe? Yeah, I think that's a good question, Jeff. Republicans have overstepped on abortion. Uh, I think the Supreme Court was right to send it back to the states. Nikki Haley was exactly right. Uh, there's not the votes to, to do a federal ban, but there also should, shouldn't be a move to do the federal ban. That's not what um, that's not what uh, Republicans have always said they wanted to. This is a state's issue, and that's where it should remain. But you know, Nikki Haley was very strong in that answer. She she did a great job in the whole debate. I felt she was the strongest in that debate uh, um, uh, overall. Uh, she was uh, uh, prepared. Her experience as a governor was clear. Her experience as a U.N. ambassador was was clear. And uh, it was a good night for Nikki Haley. And she was exactly right, Jeff, on that answer about abortion. Sarah Smarsh, you live in Kansas, and voters in Can Kansas decided last year to keep abortion legal in that state. And Democrats have pointed to that as evidence that uh, reproductive rights is a winning issue for Democrats that they should focus on in the year ahead. How do you see it? That's right, Jeff. Um, Kansas held the first post-Roe vote in the form of a voter referendum that potentially would have um, laid the groundwork to strip uh, the, the state constitution's granting of a uh, right to an abortion. Uh, moderates and even Republicans uh, joined Democrats, liberals, and progressives in voting down that referendum. And what followed was a uh, number of midterms campaigns in which Democrats of various stripes followed suit, leaning into what I would describe as a strategy of kind of reclaiming the notion of freedom or liberty and applying that to bodily autonomy. It was a winning strategy. Um, Democrats uh, obviously think that it's a it's a win for them going forward. I think what we saw on the stage last night, and I agree with Gary that that uh, Nikki Haley had the strongest performance, actually. Um, I think that what we saw in that sort of sparring between her and Mike Pence was uh, perhaps uh, grappling uh, on the right with how now to proceed, being cognizant of the fact that the post row landscape seems to have um, affected voter behavior in ways that their old political models can't necessarily predict. Let's talk about Ukraine, because even without Donald Trump on that stage, the Republican Party's biggest foreign policy fight was over Ukraine. So here, here's an exchange involving uh, Vivek Ramaswamy. I think that this is disastrous, that we are protecting against an invasion across somebody else's border when we should use those same military resources to prevent across the invasion of our own southern border here in the United States of America. They have gouged out people's eyes, cut off their ears, and shot people in the back of the head, men, and then gone into those homes and raped the, the daughters and the wives who were left as widows and orphans. If we don't stand up against this type of autocratic killing we in the world, to we will be next. That was Chris Christie talking about the Russian troops. Gary, how and why has support for Kyiv become a wedge issue among the GOP? Well, it, it is because uh, if you look at polling, CNN did a poll, you know, just a couple of weeks ago, showing that I think it was 55 percent of Americans don't aren't in favor of more aid, more congressional aid to Ukraine. 
And that broke down heavily among partisan lines. Uh, most, you know, it was like 70 percent of Republicans felt that way. Most Democrats do support more aid to Ukraine. So right now, it's just like on the abortion issue, Jeff. They're playing for the Republican vote. They're trying to win the Republican primary right now and not so much looking at general election questions. So so they're looking at, at the uh, people like uh, Ramos, Ramaswamy and uh, others who are who are really questioning how di how deep we're getting in with Ukraine. That plays well with the Republican base right now, just like you can't be too pro-life on the abortion issue for the Republican electorate. And that's where their focus is at right now. Sarah Marsh, how is it that Democrats are in many ways embracing the Reagan doctrine, you know, assisting another nation fighting for freedom for reasons both strategic and moral, as Republicans, MAGA Republicans, are increasingly rejecting it? Right. I think on both sides of the aisle, you see some interesting fractures, and some of those were, um, I believe, on display during the debate. Uh, among Democrats and liberals, there um, doesn't seem to be a, a clear line of agreement within um, the discourse, at least. You know, voting might be another matter, but what I hear on the ground is a sort of split between a more moderate um, typically hawkish version um, of a Democrat and um, their views and uh, anti-interventionist mode that's actually right now resonates more with the left in a way that strangely um, coincides with uh, the, the far right. So um, it, it's a highly complicated um, foreign policy issue to be sure. I think that the, the debate revealed, um, to me at least, that they uh, the Republicans have not coalesced around a single narrative. And on climate change, that's a top issue for young voters, both Democratic and Republican and independent. Uh, most of the Republican presidential candidates haven't talked much about it, but it came up during that debate, again, involving Vivek Ramaswamy. Let us be honest as Republicans. I'm the only person on the stage who isn't bought and paid for, so I can say this. The climate change oh, whoa, agenda whoa, whoa, whoa. is a That's hoax. Ridiculous. The climate is change ridiculous. agenda is a hoax. So climate change, it's settled science. But, but Gary, what should we make of the varied and evolving ways uh, that Republicans are trying to address climate change? Well, it's not settled among Republicans, Jeff. It's, it's uh, again, just like abortion, just like Ukraine, it's one of those issues where what Ramaswamy is saying about it plays very well to, uh, to uh, the Republican voters who he's trying to win right now. The Washington Post just had a poll on climate change. It came out uh, August uh, 23rd, they reported on it, where it said, you know, Republicans and Republican-leaning uh, independents uh, uh, don't think that uh, man-made global warming is responsible for the hot days that we're having, whereas a majority of 85% of Democrats and Democrat-leaning independents do think so. So again, uh, it's it's just uh, the difference in how members, strong members of both parties or those leaning one, one way or the other feel about it, and uh, Ramaswamy was playing right to that base. Sarah, how do you see it? Well, I want to tease out just a bit of nuance, a distinction between um, the way that your question was framed, Jeff, and Gary's response. Um, climate change uh, itself um, is um, among the, the Republicans and right-leaning folks I speak with, not so much um, a matter of dispute. It's The, the key is whether it's man-made, and that, of, co of course, points That's to right. um, whether various regulations and changes in human behavior, uh, specifically consumerism, would be required to remedy it. Um, the moderator's question during the debate specifically said, raise your hand if you agree with man-made climate change. And I think that um, while that too is settled science from, uh, as far as I know, uh, that seems to be the, the piece that um, certainly relates to big business interests um, and their, their involvement in, uh, in that political wing of the national discourse. And lastly, Donald Trump is now the only sitting or former U.S. president to have had his mugshot taken. This mugshot, of course, connected to a criminal trial in Georgia. In the couple of minutes we have left, I just want to have you reflect on the moment and, and this mugshot. Sarah, first. Well, it, it's certainly striking. Um, I think that there aren't really any surprises here in this immediate wake of the mugshot's release, release in that his sort of cult of personality is rallying behind it. I believe he's already using it as a lever for fundraising purposes. Um, and uh, meanwhile, uh, 
millions of Americans are, are aghast uh, that this uh, person um, facing all these indictments and criminal charges is still the eminent front runner. So um, I, I don't think that the mugshot actually changes anything. It, it's historic, no doubt. Um, and perhaps the folks who are a little wary, a little tired of Trump, that are more on the moderate edges um, of his uh, piece of the electorate will be moved by it, but uh, it seems like a sort of symbol or totem that's now being embraced by his followers. Um, I've seen avatars being switched out for Trump's mugshot among Republicans on social media and so on. Gary? Yeah, I agree with Sarah. Sarah's exactly right. It depends on what side of the aisle you're on and where you're at politically on how that mugshot's going to play. You know, let's be honest, mugshots aren't what they used to be, at least not that one from Fulton County, where, you know, you don't have the height board behind you and you're not holding up the numbers. Uh, that's a portrait Trump may have commissioned and sat for himself the way it turned out. Gary Abernathy and Sarah Smarsh, my thanks to you both. Have a great weekend. Thanks. Thank thanks, Jeff.